Watch this. I don't know what I'm doing here. We're gonna go off grid for two days. Even though I don't have an exhaust pipe on my Tesla, in a way, I have an exhaust oh, pipe. No. It's just at the coal plant. We are going to do a super crazy and fun challenge that I've wanted to do for a long time. I was talking to the people at Span and they said, hey, we'll sponsor a video if you can go off grid for 48 hours. And I accepted the challenge, so here we are. And honestly, if we didn't have Span connected to our house, there's no way we could do this challenge because if the power went out, if the grid went out, the only thing that would charge inside of our house is like four or five breakers because that's the way the electrical engineer set it up originally. But now with Span, we can control smartly our entire house. I don't even know if smartly is a word. Smartly. Everything has to come from those solar panels, the solar panels over here, and the ones we have along the backside of this roof. Why do they have to be mowing their lawn right when I come out to film? We have two Tesla power walls. We only have two of them. I've got the Tesla power wall app right now that's up. We use a lot of energy here at our house. It's a very, very large house and it's almost like a commercial building. I have to somehow manage our electricity. It's going to require some creativity of me turning on and off certain breakers, running electricity certain ways. Sorry, city, you don't get my money. So the first step is though, we have to turn off the grid. Now, there's two different ways to do it. One, you can flip the breaker and just shut off the power. There's some issues with that, and I wanna do something that if you have Tesla solar and Tesla power walls, you can do this safely at home. In the Tesla app, it does say go off grid. It's a function that they added, and so those of you that have Tesla power walls, it's a great way to do this. Oh, I have to be near the power wall. This is not the power wall. This is the thing on the side of the house that flips off the stuff. Toggle switch. Does toggle mean like on and off or just off? Toggle. Let's see. Off, on. Oh, flip back on. It says flip back on. Hey, power wall is securely paired to your phone. All right, here goes nothing. We're at 24% battery. It is exactly 12 o'clock. Go off grid. I've never done this before. Is everything going to turn off in the house? Go off grid. Error going off grid. Please reduce loads. Allow power wall to further charge. I don't want the power wall to be charged up to 100 before we do it. That's lame. We're gonna go find the switch. I don't know what I'm doing here. Don't recommend you do this at home. I'm no expert. This says service disconnect. Your home has lost power. You will be notified when the power is back on. Okay, so Span just notified me that my power is out. And then Tesla says grid outage about, I have about 1.8 backup hours remaining. Okay, we did it. We're off grid officially. Forget that simulated grid outage. We're actually out. There's no power to our house right now. And I do appreciate that Span and Tesla app both notified me. Oh boy, I hear the air conditioning going on. We can't have air conditioning going. We have to get to 20%. And if you haven't seen it, we made a video installing these two span panels. These are the smart panels that are tied to our breakers. So all of our breakers are right here for the house, just like normal. The old technology where you can flip them on and off, but I have the span smart app on my phone and I can turn on and off any breaker inside of our house. We're gonna live our life as normal. If we use too much electricity, power is gonna be out and it'll be a pain in the butt. But today is Claire's birthday. I got blue ones for you. Sorry. Lighting those candles. Did that, that one's not lighting. This, this takes no energy other than fire, so that's good. Oh no, we gotta hurry. You have too many candles, Claire. Don't count. Everybody get ready. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Claire. Happy birthday to you. Good job, Claire. Wow. Did you make a wish? Good. I've gone into the Span app and I've moved everything into must-have circuits. There's nothing in nice to have and there's nothing in non-essentials at the start of the challenge. Let's just run it all. And as things start to take a lot of energy, I'm probably gonna kick them down. Good news, it is 3.38 p.m. and we are at 97% battery. I'll have it up here on screen. We're getting 9.8 kilowatts of solar to the panels up here and the home is taking 7.1, so we've got some of the air conditioners running right now. 
But 97%, we have to get to 100 and stay at 100. Pretty soon here in the next few minutes, we're gonna be at 100% capacity on the battery. And usually what we do is we push the excess power to the grid, but because the grid is closed off, that excess power is going nowhere. So I think we're going to need to be strategic on like maybe charging the Teslas or turning on some of the air conditioning to cool the house down during the daytime a little bit more, utilize some of the energy that's there. We gotta use it because we're, we're gonna, it's just gonna lose it otherwise. Here is the status. It is 7.16 PM. You can see it on the screen right now. And we still have sun that's on the solar on the RV garage. We still have a little bit on the solar that's like right here on the back of the office. But the one over the master is completely shaded right now. So we're nearing the end. We probably got another 20 minutes or so. It's funny because Tesla is telling me that I have 6.9 backup hours. Span tells me I have eight hours and 45 minutes based off of what I'm using right now. So they're both a little bit different. I like where Span is at too. Now the cool thing about Span, like I've said before, is right now I still have everything on there like everything. And so I could start transferring stuff over and I'm going to have to do it. Like one of the air conditioners is on right now. Let's turn that off. We don't need that on. Why do we need air conditioning? It's nighttime. So I'm gonna move some stuff over. That just changed it. So now we have 10 hours and 38 minutes left. Now that I've changed that over, Span is estimating we have 12 hours and 26 minutes. Now the sun comes up around 6.30 a.m. and it comes up over this way. So it takes until around 11 o'clock in the in the morning until we start getting energy. So if the battery goes out at 6 a.m., we are not gonna have electricity until like 11 or 12. So anyway, it's gonna be a tricky one, but I'm going to use Span to navigate this and hopefully have enough energy to survive tonight. We'll let you know, I mean, we're gonna survive either way. I'm not making too many friends in the house, but because I'm turning off a lot of your outlets. I know got all these flashlights. Flashlights, <laughs> just in case. Is in this a flashlight? Turn, it's a little snow globe. Oh, oh. <laughs> it makes some lights. So. <laughs> and I have these two. And then you got a portary, porter, portable, portable battery, battery that is somewhat charged while you're charging your phone out here because I do have this outlet on. Claire, how was your birthday? It was good, it was fun. Did you like your party? Yeah, so cake fun. was good, so how, fun. How was dance tonight? So fun. Did they sing to you? So you got sung to twice today? Three times. Three? I know, crazy. That's great. Okay, well, sorry about the power, guys. Um, girls, get in bed. I'm going to oh, bed. That's oh, wow, that's a really bright flashlight. She's not okay, <laughs> good night. Good luck. <laughs> look at the flashlight, it's so dumb. <laughs> if we take a look at the Tesla app tonight, I'm super tired, by the way. It is, we're using two kilowatts of energy at this moment and we have not used the grid yet. So 67% of the battery is left at 11 o'clock. Tesla says we have six hours remaining and Span says we have eight hours remaining. So this is really tricky. Ooh, well, good morning, everybody. You look tired. I'm a little tired. Um, I had dreams. I had dreams about the power going out. I had dreams about missing school, even though I haven't been in school in many, many years. But here we are. As you can see, the sun is shining. It's shining right over there. It has just come up. And if you look at my phone, I'm getting zero kilowatts of energy from the sun, even though the sun's right there. But that's because all of my solar panels are on the other side of the house. But if you look closer, we have 8% left on our power walls. It's so bright out here. So bright. It wasn't really the easiest, like London ended up leaving and coming into the master bedroom <laughs> because her sleep machine in her bedroom went off. I guess the little charging bank that I have um, has a, some sort of time limit or something. And so it like turned off in the middle of the night. And so she just like got up and went into her room. Right now, the temperature is perfect outside. And so I turned off all the air conditioning units or heating units and the house stayed at a good temperature all night. So. If depending on what time of year it was, if it's too cold or it's too hot, then this whole thing wouldn't have worked. We wouldn't be at 8% right now because we're only using 1.2 kilowatts of energy. It would have been out a lot earlier. This experiment, this is a good time of year to do it and we did it through the night. Um, I don't know what time the sun's gonna start shining on these solar panels to give us any bit of solar, like we're getting zero right now. 
but I still have to be careful for a little bit until that happens. We have some laundry that we need to have done today. Um, I will need to turn on the air conditioners once it starts getting hot. It's gonna be 82 degrees today outside. Lincoln is late for school because his alarm didn't go off because his cell phone died throughout the night and his, his alarm is on a cell phone. So <laughs> I'm just happy that we still have energy in our battery. That was kind of the goal last night and it wouldn't have happened without the span panels to be able to redirect energy to turn off certain breakers and to still be comfortable enough with the ones on that we had. So, okay, the saga continues. In four more hours, we will have hit 24 hours and I still am curious to see if solar will start going before the batteries die. Oh no, oh no. I was just at my computer working in the studio and the power shut down. Oh, there's my time lapse. Just walked by it. Um, it's out. We're out. It's totally done. Leslie's on a walk with the dog, I think. So when she comes back, we have the door unlocked for her. Otherwise, <laughs> she won't be able to get in the house. Leslie is taking the dog to the groomer today. So she's going to need to get out of the garage, but We got nothing. We got no power. This is crazy because look what time it is. 8.36 a.m. I was just barely talking to you about, ah, but we are so close. If we would have put panels up pointing to the east, we would be totally fine right now. Okay, I thought we had it. I probably shouldn't have been working so hard with all the tech out there in the studio. I need to open this. The sun is so bright, we're so close. I mean, look at these roof tiles. I didn't put solar and roof tiles on this, this way because if I did it on the other side of the house, it was looking into our master bedroom. And if I did it on this side of the house, it just is like when we drive in, you see solar, and Leslie doesn't like seeing solar on roof. Oh, hey dog. Are you gonna go get your hair done? She doesn't know yet. She doesn't know what's about to happen. The power just went out. I know, London's screaming because she doesn't have her sound machine. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> Tessa, come on. You get to go on a ride. Come on, let's go. Have fun, see you later. She hates it, she's gonna shake the Oh, she time. hates going to there. But Thank you for taking her. Afterward. Let's do it. All right, I opened the garage for you because the power oh, went out. Thank you. <laughs> okay, bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that garage open for her. Why did I come get to my computer? Like, it's not gonna turn on, I've got no power. I just naturally came out here and got on my computer to do some work, but um, I, I can't do it on there. I'm gonna have to just do it on my phone. Okay, just hit nine o'clock. The sun is shining on the solar. We've got 504 watts. It just charged the battery up to 10%. We are exactly 24 hours into this challenge. It is halfway over. We have survived one full day and I've learned a lot. It's been really interesting. It's been challenging and it's been also impressive to see what kind of setup we have here. So if we're only halfway done with the challenge, I'll probably make it a little bit shorter and I'll uh, not film as much stuff and go through it. But there are some interesting things that I wanted to point out after the 24 hours. I am impressed and surprised that we actually made it through the night pretty much at the house. Um, I ha did have to turn off a lot of things, but there's some of the essentials were on. The refrigerator is on, so the food was kept up for the night. We kept the Wi-Fi on pretty much all night until that last 25 minutes. The security cameras and all of the footage was being recorded on all the like 20 or 30 cameras that we have around the house, outside and inside. So a lot of those essentials that you want to keep on in an emergency or just keep on in general was on, which was nice. One of the more disappointing things and confusing things is the difference between some of the apps on like how much energy we're getting in and what the Tesla power walls are doing. And honestly, the big issue is with the Tesla energy app. It's just not accurate or efficient. I've already highlighted a few different issues that we have, but as of right now, it's 12.02 PM. It says that we are getting 3.4 kilowatts of energy coming into the house right now, and it's all going to the power wall, and that the power wall is at 8%. But the Wi-Fi is on in the house. The Wi-Fi is on on my phone right now. The lights are all on. There is energy going to the house, but according to the Tesla app, there's no energy going to the house. You would see it going to the right and it would be going to the home. It says the home is using zero. That's not accurate. Now I have a couple different apps. 
first let's go over to this new one that I didn't look at all yesterday, but I called the guy that installed our solar and he gave me this tip. This is the Solar Edge app, and this is the app with the inverter, I think it's called, where all the energy goes in from the solar and then goes to Tesla. So it does show that right now, you see the sun shining on our solar panels, we have 4.98 kilowatts going into this, the house. And you can see on the chart, like it's been quickly going up. And at some point today, in the next couple of hours, we'll get up to its peak and we'll be getting a lot of energy. But then the other app, let's look at the Span app. You can see on Span that we're seeing those watts coming in. It says 5,430 watts of energy coming in, and it shows that the power wall is at 13% and that it's getting 3,400 watts. And then it shows the house is using nine, or 2,000 now, 2,000 watts of our house. The Span app actually seems to be more accurate as far as what's going on. Maybe the Tesla Powerwall is not at 13%. I don't know if it's actually at eight, but we definitely have electricity going into our house. And then the amount of sunshine coming in, 5,400 watts, that's way closer to what this is. This was updated three minutes ago. Let's update the Solar Edge. Yeah, the Solar Edge should be up there. It's updated three minutes ago, but it's getting sunnier and sunnier every moment. So Tesla is kind of letting me down a little bit on what is going on. And sometimes the app just like disconnects from the Wi-Fi, where the Span app is hardwired into the internet. So it pretty much has internet the whole time. Even when Tesla shows that it's down, I can go into the Span app and see what's actually happening. Okay, so that's a lot of talking. That's a few minutes into 12 o'clock or 24 hours into it. We are going to proceed. We're going to do the next 24 hours and see if we can survive another night. The kids, they were, I was just barely in the house and they're like, dad, it's really cold in here. Um, I don't feel comfortable turning on the heaters yet. And I don't even want to turn the heaters on anyway, because it's going to be 80 degrees today. It might be 60 right now. Tonight, I'd rather not run all the air conditioner units once it's dark, because that's going to eat away at the power wall super, super fast. It is 6.50 p.m. on day two, and we are at 98% charge of the power wall. We did a good job. You can see on the Tesla app that it says impact 100% self-powered today. What? That's wrong. Oh, that's for the year. <laughs> Day. There we go. Today, 100% self-powered. 100%, that's pretty good. So we have not used any power from the grid. The thing has been flipped since that 12 o'clock on that day. And we're set. I've learned some interesting things today through the charging that I didn't show you. The Tesla app does some really weird things. It will only charge the power wall up to 98%. And as soon as it hits 98%, it turns off the solar. So look, the sun is shining on the solar, on that one, on that one, and on that one but yet it shows that we have 0% kilowatts coming from solar. And so what is happening with the Tesla Powerwalls? First of all, let me tell you this. I think the Tesla app works fantastic when it comes to um, every day when you are on the grid. Like it's so smart at charging up the battery and then running it back down to what you want it to run it down to. But I don't think a lot of people go off grid very often with the Tesla Powerwalls and Tesla Solar. And so it is buggy and the engineers could do a little bit more work or explain it better because it is strange that we're getting zero kilowatts. And my guess is, this is what I'm thinking, because usually my power wall goes to 100% and it stays there. But what I think is happening is Tesla is strategically shutting it down because as soon as it gets to 98%, it will run it from the battery because it's a consistent amount and controllable amount of electricity until it gets down to 96, then the solar kicks back in and it helps it. And I think what they don't wanna do is get it to 100% for the battery and then go to solar and have the solar going. And then all of a sudden, what if the solar flickers or goes out and then the battery isn't kicked in and then the house loses power for a second. I think it's a thing to manage the flicker in the house and the potential for like being off for a split second or two. That's my guess. But either way, it's kind of annoying because I would love right now to end the day in the next 20, 30 minutes while the sun goes down with the battery pack at 100%, but it's at 98% and it's running the house at 2.2. So I know we're in America and it's like first world problems, but I'm super grateful for energy. I'll say that, like I'm grateful for the grid. I don't hate the grid. I, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the solar and the power walls. And um, I'm grateful that we have a system that will cover the home, but it sure is more convenient when you have the grid going and the solar and the power walls together because tonight again, the kids are not gonna be very happy with me because I'm gonna be turning off stuff in the house, making it a little bit uncomfortable for them. And then once I turn it on tomorrow, party time. We're gonna run the pool, get it going, get it clean, cause it's gonna be 90 degrees next week. 
and it's pool time. It's summertime, at least where we live. So there you go. Um, so weird. 5.4 of kilowatts of solar and it's all going to the power wall. It's so weird. All right, um, bedtime, and we'll do a recap at the end, see if we make it through the night. I hope we make it through the night. I don't know. I think we'll make it through the night, but we'll see. All right, it's nighttime. It's like 10.30 at night. Um, I have a few lights on. I've turned off all of the air conditioners, and I've turned off some of the circuits that we're using just a minimal amount of energy. Like, I don't know if there's little, like, chargers that are plugged in or something, but... Um, we're at around 69% at 10.30 at night. So I'm hoping that we can make it to the morning. It's 9.05 in the morning. We've got 1.3 coming from solar, which is interesting because look up here, there's nothing going on. I really do think it's like the sun shining off of the glass from here and then like a small portion of it getting kicked up and going onto this because there's definitely no sun up on these ones. We had a couple of issues last night at 1.30 in the morning. I'm not sure why, but the power flickered off, like it all went off. I think something with the Tesla app, saw something that it didn't like because we had 50% battery. So Lincoln was still up doing homework. It shut down his computer. He had a big math test today. And so he came in and woke me up. He's like, dad, internet, turn the internet on. I was too tired. I'm just like, just go to bed. And so I just went to bed and didn't really care about it. But the good news is we're good. We had power most of the night. We have power now. The power walls work and uh, we're only it's just under three hours until we're done with this challenge and then I can give a few more thoughts, but yeah, I should probably get ready for the day. I don't know if I can shower. Is that gonna use too much power? It probably will. The water heater uses a bit, but I'll take a shower. Come on. We did it, 48 hours. These have been switched off the whole time. Watch this. Making noises, singing songs at me. I feel like that's a positive. Nothing's coming from the grid yet. Oh, I can't believe we did it. 48 hours. It was a little stressful. A couple things, I've learned a lot of stuff. We'll talk about it later, but let's get this going first. Come on. How does the grid go back on? Flipped it on. Wonder if I have to do more, like, Shouldn't the grid just be on right now? Hey, question for you. It's been the 24, 48 hours, it's been the 48 hours. I flipped on the switch to go power on and then um, nothing's happening. Like the grid is not booting back up again. I don't really know why. Um, it's been eight minutes now. I'm trying to get the grid to go up. Do you have any tips here? Do I, what, is there something else I'm supposed to do to make the, oh, I'm hearing noises. Maybe it's working. I, let me do a check. Oh, standby. We're on standby. It might just take some time for the grid to like turn back on. And by some time, I mean like five or 10 minutes. But the grid, it doesn't show that we're off grid anymore. There's no like X between the grid and the house. Let's go to the span panel. <gasps> oh, when I go back to the span panel, I just reset it. We have power from the grid now. Tesla is still not reporting anything. I'm gonna turn on the air conditionings and all this stuff, but Lincoln just came home from school very proudly said he caught a lizard. There's a little lizard in there. Wait, where? Behind the in golf ball box. Nope. In there. Let's see it. Pull it out. Oh, he's right there. There he is. He's a little guy. Hi, hey, buddy. No, let him live. I am. I'm not going to kill him. You can move now. He's kind of dumb. Yeah, well, he's cold. Whew. It was a long 48 hours. We did learn some things. Um, and I want to give you just some thoughts overall. You can hear the air conditioning unit running. We can run it all we want because we have the grid. Our cars, I haven't done this in 48 hours. I can plug it in now and charge it so we can get some juice inside of my electric car. Lincoln's car, well let's plug in Lincoln's car. We can use all the electricity we want now because we are on the grid and we can manage all of it. Here's our two trusty Tesla power walls. Overall, I can say that they did a great job. Considering how large our house is and how much power needed to go that way, we did a good job at loading up in the daytime and then feeding it out. I wish I had a lot more power walls, like probably four to six. Four to six would probably be ideal for this house. That way we would have enough to actually run the house when the power's off. 
But honestly, the real hero of the off the grid challenge is the SPAN panels, which is funny because this video is sponsored by SPAN. They're the ones that gave us the challenge to go off grid. But really, these smart panels, whew, which are pretty to look at with the different lights up that are on it, these smart panels being connected to the app really are the thing that made it happen because look at all of these things that are running off of the power. And without me coming in here and physically turning off the buttons, I can virtually do it with the app, turn on and off different breakers or move them at different levels of priority. Span made it possible for us to have control over what was being used and what wasn't being used during the off the grid challenge. I wanna show you some of the numbers to show you that we really did go off grid. Um, I have the Span app open, which is a really good app for me to look at the data. Today we've generated 42 kilowatt hours of energy. Yesterday, 75. The day before that, 61. The day before that, 106. So it was super sunny yesterday, 70 degrees. I think we could have generated more energy than the 75, but we are actually limited based off of how full the power wall was and how much energy our house was using at the moment. Our solar would only take in so much. And when our power wall got to 98%, it didn't matter that we were getting tons of power coming from the Tesla solar, it would shut off the Tesla solar entirely and just run off the battery. It does feel like there's some issues with it that it could be more efficient when the power is actually off and the way that it runs and the way that it uses the solar. Here in the Span app, we'll look at the grid use over time. This is really the one that shows you how much we've been on the grid. So you can check it out and see that we got on the grid today, a couple hours ago at noon. Yesterday, we used zero kilowatts from the grid. So we use zero. There's the proof right there, zero. I go to the next day before that, and bam, 12 o'clock, everything shuts off. Before that, we used 43 kilowatt hours. We discharged 16 kilowatt hours yesterday and we took in eight kilowatt hours. Now yesterday, we discharged 34 and took in 37. So that was our off-grid day entirely right there. The nice thing about the span panel is that it is hardwired into our internet. So even when the Wi-Fi goes down, it is still connected and still speaks to the phone when I'm on cell service. Where the Tesla Home Energy Gateway, even right now, it shows that it's on standby. It shows that nothing's coming in from solar. The battery is not doing anything it looks like the house is off. Nothing's coming from the grid. And this happens multiple times a day. If I click on energy, you can see these black gaps that are in there. And that's when, for, for whatever reason, the Wi-Fi from the gateway for Tesla is not communicating properly with the power walls. And so that's something that's really frustrating, especially when it's in the middle of the day when the sun is shining, we could be filling up the power walls or pushing the energy back to the grid and making money off of that. If this app is not connected, then the power wall kind of just goes to sleep and the energy doesn't do what it's supposed to do. When if we look right now, exactly right now at the flow of what's happening within the SPAN app, you can see right there that we're taking in energy from solar and we have energy that's charging the house. And actually we do have a little bit that goes back to the grid. It's just, I don't know that the power wall ever gets charged when the Tesla Gateway app is broken. We don't live in an off-grid home. This is not what this is set up for. I put the solar panels on after we built the house. I put the power walls on after we built it. I even put the span panels on afterward. There is no way that our Tesla solar can keep up with the AC that's going on, the lights that are going on, charging our cars. So really this is just to lower our energy cost and also to lower our carbon footprint in the world, which is kind of nice because we do have four electric cars and I'm conscious of that, that that does use a lot of energy. Our energy in Utah comes mostly from burning coal. If you're somebody that just wants to be completely off grid, you're gonna have to get a lot of solar or have a smaller house that's more efficient and you gotta have battery storage solutions, whether it's Tesla or somebody else that's big enough to take in the power and to charge it. Because in the summertime here, it gets to 115 degrees. Our batteries in the summertime, like dead summer for like two months, the Tesla power walls just sit there at 100% or sit there at 20%. They never actually charge and discharge throughout the day because it's just too hot. And similar thing in the winter, we use a lot of energy with running the heaters. So overall, this was uh, a good, insightful thing to do. I'm glad that we did it. I learned a lot. I'm changing a lot of our system for when the next time the power actually goes out that it's not by me. And hopefully my kids are a little bit more prepared to understand that you don't always have the internet. You don't always have electricity. That can happen in today's world. Sometimes we forget that. And fortunately, we live in a beautiful place with tons of sunshine, but 
for those of you that live in Texas where power outages happen, in California where it happens, or somewhere where it's really cold, or in Florida where there's hurricanes, how nice to have some sort of setup like this to where you can remain a little bit more comfortable in your home. If you're interested in getting Span, we'll put a link in the description. If you would like to get Span for your own house or for a new house or your existing home, we'll put a link in the description. Thank you Span for sponsoring this video. We'll also put a link down below for Tesla Solar and Tesla Powerwalls. But if you're considering going energy efficient, off-grid, trying to figure out what to do with solar, make sure that you check out Span with whatever system that you're going to use. And then I would suggest starting with Tesla Solar and Powerwalls in order to get your quotes and figure out if that's the one for you on your house. Let me know your thoughts. How did we do? What could I do differently? I hope this was interesting and entertaining. It was primarily me talking a lot about what's happening, but hopefully it was interesting to you guys. I'm glad that we did it and I'm also glad that it's over so now we can have our nice air conditioning in our house and charge our cars. I don't even need to worry about it anymore. So anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you. There's people walking by as a nervous talking to my camera. Okay, they're gone. So yeah, we still do have the Zach statue. We're working on a plan. They're building the house behind us like any month now, like any day now, really. As of right now, Lincoln just texted and said the putting green is ruined at our local golf course. They're the worst over there. Why do we pay all the money for a golf course? <laughs> all right, so we're at 28% bad. We're at uh, half our white. He keeps texting me. Sorry. I'll try this to see if this helps. Lincoln keeps texting me. The house isn't responding. The house isn't responding. It should say happy birthday on it, but it just says we love you, Claire, and we've always had that. But, but, oh! Girls, get in bed.